Hello again, everybody. Now we're going to talk about, from recent videos, about the lighting systems in cars. So, diagnostic and troubleshooting. First of all, you have many, many modules in today's auto. Even years ago, you still have modules. How do we diagnose? How do we troubleshoot? So, we always have to start understand first the way the system works. Then we can diagnose and troubleshoot. So, one thing to understand about the lighting systems, the bulbs and everything, they are something called parallel circuits. Parallel means you have different branches with equal voltages. In other words, if 12 volts would be here across any branch, you would have 12 volts every single bulb whether it's the brake lights whether it's the parking lamps whether it's license plate whatever it is 12 volts across each one now where the open is in the branch circuits that depends what the fault will be so in parallel if one bulb goes out it does not affect the other branches this is called the branch this is called the branch where current splits up current will come from here Besides, over here, we'll go over that. Current will go split up here. Current will go here. In every branch, current will flow. Voltage does not flow. Therefore, if this there's a problem with this bulb, it will not affect the other branches. The other branches can still have current lining up the other bulbs. That's the beauty of parallel. If you would put these in series, a series circuit, that means this will be connected to this one, then this will be connected to this one. The other side of this will be connected to this. That means if one is out, all the bulbs will be out. We don't want that, obviously. That's number one. Equal voltage across each one. Now, depending which branch. So let's let's simplify that. If the open would be here, it would affect this one. If the open would be here, it would affect this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. If the open would be here, it would affect all of them. Because this is the common that goes to all of them. Now, let's understand the, the, the circuit first. The parking lamps are on. You want the parking lamps to be on. Now, so as I said before, as I specified, lighting control modules. Many, many modules, as I have spoken in, in so many videos on my channel please subscribe to it automotive electronic schematics by joseph and yeah pcm modules you have tcm modules for transmission you have ecms engine control modules yeah body control module for the accessories that I went over what do we know about the module what's in here we don't know much all we know is somehow 12 volts goes from here, and the output, these are the inputs, and this is the output. How do I know? Well, the input over here is 12 volts, this is 12 volts, this is 12 volts, this is the input. This feeds the loads. So something that feeds the loads would be the output. So therefore, how do we make the lamps first illuminate, light on? Well, let's see where there is a connection. If you put the switches, over here, hot at all times. That means we don't need to crank the engine at all. You, In fact, you don't even need to put the key and turn the key. All you have to go is go to the switch next to the dashboard and flip the switch, just like to flip the switch in your house for the lights. Therefore, if you put this in on, nothing is connected here. If you put this on off, nothing is connected here. The only way you would have a connection is when you put it in park. These are ganged together. There is no dotted line, but these have to be ganged together. So this goes here. This goes here. So now, there is a, cur a current or a path for it to flow to for the module. Two other things. The fuse is 15 amps. That's, a, that's about right when you have all the, the, the lights on. Remember, fuse blows. A circuit breaker is something that pops, that I can reset it. As you notice, again, 15 amps here, 
and this one is 16 amps, one amp more. So therefore, let's say I have a problem, all the lights are not on. I go to the car, I put on the switch parking, nothing comes on, not the lights, the plates, not the parking, not the turn signals, nothing, not the hazards, nothing comes on. Should I suspect the first thing is a fuse like many people do? Well, if we're aware of how to, it works, then we should be able to diagnose. Where will we start? That's the question. Okay, you want to start with a point where you can have easy access to. Usually the fuse box is easy access. Where relays are is easy access. It's easy, right under the hood. Take off the cover for the fuse box. The switch is a little more complicated. You have to take it apart. If you can get to the lighting control module, I have a point right here that's 12 volts. If I measure over here at the output, 12 volts, I can be satisfied that there's 12 volts going to these. But there's a condition. So therefore, if this switch is on, this is 12 volts. Let's say this is pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, let's say. Pin 1 will have 12 volts when I put the switch on in the park position. Pin 2 will have 12 volts. I could go pin 1, pin 2, do I have 12 volts? Yes, that means the switch is intact. Do I have 12 volts over here, pin 3? Yes. Do I have 12 volts at pin 4? Yes. All the inputs have the proper voltages and measurements, fine. What do we need? We need an output. Just like in a PCM, and I spoke about so many, so many times, the inputs for the PCM, as you'll see in my videos, are the sensors, mass FO sensor, TPS sensor, um, uh, um, uh, IAT sensor, coolant temperature sensor, MAP sensor. The input, they're giving information which controls the engine performance. More air, more fuel, less air, less fuel. I talked about in other videos. So therefore, those are inputs. What would be the outputs? The motors, the fuel injectors from the PCM. Same thing over here. This is the output. We need 12 volts. A good place to start is, boom, right here. I go over here. If I, if I have access to this module, remember, there's several wires. Sometimes it's hard to get to these places this, under the hood or the dashboard, wherever it might be. So if I can, I'll go to this point, 12 volts, boom, right here. The brown wire right here. 12 volts, that tells me this is working. Okay, now, 12 volts over here. All the bulbs are out. All the bulbs are out. Therefore, I would have to, like we just said before, what can it be? Well, that tells me the module is working. The fact that I have 12 volts. The only thing that will interrupt the current flow to all of these things is this common branch, like I just spoke about before. Any other branch that would be open would affect only its bulb, its individual current flow. Therefore, if there's an open over here, it would only affect this one, left front side marker light. If there's an open over here, it would only affect the license light. That's on the back of your car in the rear. The only thing that would affect everything is this, an open over here, or if the ground opened up. So therefore, the fact, if I would measure zero volts over here, then I have to go back over here and say, do I have 12 volts in the inputs? I go over here, zero volts. Now I have to see, do I have 12 volts? If I don't have 12 volts over here and have zero volts, obviously this is blown. If I have zero volts over here, obviously the circuit breaker popped. If I have 12 volts over here, but I have zero volts over here, that means this switch internally is broken or stuck in another position. Remember again, when you have a, when you have a, a blown fuse or a tripped circuit breaker, it's always good to measure with, for ground between this point and ground. You do not want to have a short and keep on putting fuses all the time, it'll blow. Therefore, I should have high ohms, high resistance from here to ground, at least you could do that much. Okay? Remember, when you troubleshoot, go for one point 
instead of measuring 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, we don't want to do that. Time is money for, for automotive technicians. We don't want to spend so much time measure, doing measurements where we could go to one point, one common point that will tell us in one shot, like I did in many videos on the relays, it'll tell us one shot, 12 volts, boom, I have the output from the module. It could be the module also, but that's more expensive, obviously. We don't want to make the customer come back. We, the last thing we ever want to do is change something. It's not the fault. And say, okay, it's a warranty. You can bring it back. No, that's an inconvenience for the customer. That customer needs that car for work, to get uh, the kids to school, pick up the kids to school, shopping, whatever. That's an inconvenience. You cannot say to a customer, well, just bring it back to a warranty. No, you can't do that. That's a lost customer. It's a loss of business. Try to get it right the first time. And if you have the module or the this schematic in front of you, you should have an idea how to approach it. Please subscribe to my channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. You will find, as I specified before about uh, scanners, the codes, the parameters, and the measurements, what they actually mean. Like I said, mass airflow sensor, oxygen sensor, the measurements, rich and lean, it will tell you and it will give you definitions that is seen nowhere else on YouTube. Please look for those videos on my channel. Thank you for watching all.